Okay. Uh, okay, pa. Good evening, students. Today we'll be starting uh, with the joints of the One lower minute. limb. Give me two. Sure, sir. Sure, sure. Give me two seconds. I will go live. Sure, sir. Sure. Yes, sir. Yeah. No. Okay, sir. Uh, good evening, students. Today we'll be discussing uh, the joints of the lower limb. We'll be covering the major important uh, joints frequently asked in the MCQs. First, we'll discuss about the knee joint. Am I audible to you all, students? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Now, we will first discuss about the knee joint. As you all can see here, this is the knee joint. So, the knee joint, this is formed by the femur, it is formed by tibia, and it is formed by patella. Now, which component of the femur, tibia, and patella will form the knee joint is... Here what you're seeing, this is the fibula. So this is the lateral aspect. This is the medial aspect. So this is the medial condyle of the femur, the lateral condyle of the femur, medial condyle of the tibia, and the lateral condyle of the tibia. And this is the patella. So these joints, the two condyle are medial and the uh, lateral condyles of the femur and the tibia along with the patella will form this knee joint. And furthermore, you can see that there is some partition here, which is called as the menisci. There are two menisci. This is the medial menisci and this is the lateral menisci. This menisci will divide the joint cavity into two compartments. We will discuss that later. It is because of these features, the knee joint is a complex synovial joint. Complex because there are almost three joints which participate in the formation of the knee joint. There are two condylar joint. This is lateral condylar, the uh, medial condylar joint, and the patella femoral joint or the femoropatellar joint. And this is a condylar and modified in joint. It is called, called condylar because the condyles participate in the formation of the knee joint. And it is called as the modified hinge joint because we know that in hinge joint, the transverse axis, it is just like the hinge of the door where the, the transverse axis brings about the movement. But in the knee joint, it is called as modified because the transverse axis is not fixed. It moves forwards along with extension and it moves backward along with flexion. That is why it is called as modified hinge joint. So we have already discussed the bones which participate in the formation of the knee joint. Now we will see the articular surfaces which uh, help in the formation of the knee joint. So the articular surfaces we have already discussed, the condyles, this is the, we have the two condyles, that is the medial condyle of the femur, medial condyle of the tibia, lateral condyle of the femur, lateral condyle of the tibia. So these are the articular surfaces. And this is the posterior articular surface of the patella. And this, what you're seeing here is, is the patellar articular surface on the femur. So it is in this region. The patella will articulate with the femur and form the femuropatellar joint. Now, this is to show you that the articular surfaces are covered by the hyaline cartilage. So the hyaline cartilage will cover the articular surfaces. This is the femur, as you can see, and this is the tibia. Now, on the posterior aspect, this is the posterior aspect. You all can see the two condyles which are covered by the hyaline cartilage. And in between them is the intercondylar fossa. Now, what you're seeing here, that is the meniscus. Since the fibula is here, this is the lateral aspect. This is the lateral meniscus and this is the medial meniscus. So as already discussed, this meniscus will divide the joint cavity into two compartments. So above the meniscus will be the upper compartment. Below the meniscus will be the lower compartment. This upper compartment is called as menisco femoral compartment. Upper compartment is called as menisco femoral compartment, where mainly flexion and extension occurs in the upper compartment. Now, Ma in between the men, am I audible, Pa? Yes, ma'am. But the screen is lagging, ma'am. Uh, the screen is lagging, is it? Yes, ma'am. Uh, fine, fine, Pa. Is it the same for everyone, students? No, ma'am. 
okay uh, probably some net problem pa okay i will just try to go a little bit slow yes so uh, so we have the meniscus here above the meniscus and femur is the menisco femoral compartment now below the meniscus and the tibia will be the menisco tibial compartment so in the lower compartment mainly rotatory movements will occur we will discuss once again later now uh, we will see what are the ligaments uh, which are contributing in the knee joint there are almost around 12 ligaments we will discuss the most important ones so first is the capsular ligament now the capsular ligament will enclose the knee joint let us trace the capsular ligament this is the femur as you all can see this is the anterior aspect of the femur and this is the posterior aspect of the femur as you all can see this dotted lines is representing the capsular ligament attachment so this capsular ligament is attached approximately 0.5 to 1 cm above the articular cartilage so the capsular ligament in the front it is attached 0.5 to 1 cm above the articular cartilage and it is deficit in the front where the patella will articulate so the capsular ligament is deficit in the front where the patella will articulate and it covers on both the side so that is the capsular attachment on the front of the femur now if you look at the posterior aspect of the femur this as already discussed is the intercondylar fossa these are the two condyles so this capsule is again 0.1 cm above the intercondylar line and it is attached in the following manner now we will trace the capsular ligament in the tibia so this is the anterior aspect of the tibia posterior aspect of the tibia you already know that here is the condyles you have the condyles here this will be the tibial tuberosity so if it trace the capsular ligament it passes on the down side of the condyle it comes down the tibial tuberosity blends with the ligamentum patella we'll discuss what it is so that is the tracing of the capsular ligament on the tibia if you see the posterior aspect uh, the capsular ligament it is continuous with the condyle except posteriorly except posterior to the lateral condyle of the tibia where you have a lig uh, tendon coming the popliteus for the tendon of the popliteus so there's a gap behind the lateral condyle of the tibia for passage of the tendon of the popliteus so this is a capsular attachment of the knee joint now we will see ligamentum patella as you have already seen here uh, this is a quadriceps femoris which is formed by rectus femoris and this is the vastus medialis vastus lateralis underneath this vastus intermedius so all these muscles which forms the quadriceps femoris it has a common tendinous insertion so this tendon of quadriceps femoris it has three parts one is the central part and the peripheral part the central part is known as ligamentum patella whereas medially this expansion is called as medial patella retinaculum and this expansion laterally is called as lateral patella retinaculum so this ligamentum patella this attaches from the apex of the patella this is the apex of the patella till the tibial tuberosity so this ligamentum patella attachment is apex of the patella till the upper smooth part of the tibial tuberosity so that is the ligamentum patella now this medial uh, patella retinaculum and the lateral patella retinaculum they help in giving strength to the capsule of the knee joint now we will discuss another ligament we have already discussed the ligamentum patella now we will discuss the tibial collateral ligament many mcq questions are asked so please pay attention students now tibial collateral ligament is also called as medial collateral ligament because it is on the medial side here fibula is there so this is the lateral side this will be the medial side now this is the tibial collateral ligament 
so the attachment of the tibial collateral ligament on the femur it is to the medial epicondyle of the femur just below the adductor tubercle and lower down so it is attached to the medial epicondyle of the femur and once it comes lower down it splits into superficial and the deep part the superficial part is attached to the medial border of the tibia whereas what happens to the deep part is it blends with the capsule of the knee joint and attaches to medial meniscus so what happens is the medial meniscus is attached to the tibial collateral ligament therefore the movement of the medial meniscus it is restricted because it is attached to the capsule as well as the tibial collateral ligament now this tibial collateral ligament as we have already discussed we said that it is attached to the epicondyle medial epicondyle of the femur and as it comes down it divides into superficial and a deep layer the superficial layer is attached to the medial border of the tibia whereas the deep layer blends with the capsule and it is attached to the which meniscus students which meniscus it is attached mcq question medial meniscus yeah it is attached to the medial mm. meniscus okay now about this tibial collateral ligament this is a degenerated tendon of a muscle can you say me yeah this is already there so this is the adductor magnus muscle so the adductor magnus we have already discussed that it is attached to, to the adductor tubercle initially before we assumed upright posture this adductor magnus was attached to, to the tibia but once we assumed the upright posture the uh, the uh, adductor magnus muscle it shifted its position to the adductor tubercle thereby this portion got converted into a ligament and that is called as tibial collateral ligament so in case a question is asked the tibial collateral ligament is a part remnant of which muscle your answer will be what students tibial Adduct collateral ligament yeah it is a degenerated part of the adductor magnus muscle it is attached to the which meniscus medius medial meniscus or lateral meniscus medial meniscus excellent 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 okay now we will come to the fibula collateral ligament me uh, the tibial collateral ligament was medial whereas fibula collateral ligament is lateral if you see here it is attached to the lateral epicondyle of the femur and it is attached below just near the styloid process of the fibula okay and it is embraced by the tendon of biceps femoris now just like tibial collateral ligament which was a degenerated part of the adductor magnus tibial collateral ligament can you all make a guess which muscle is this students it is a lateral compartment muscle it is passing in the groove of cuboid and it is attaching to inferior lateral aspect of the first metatarsal any idea which muscle is this the lateral compartment muscles are what are the lateral compartment muscles peroneus anterior uh, peroneus longus and peroneus brevis tibialis anterior that is the muscle very good that's the muscle of the anterior compartment so in the lateral compartment we have two muscles peroneus longus peroneus brevis okay so uh, don't get confused students tibial tibialis anterior is anterior compartment muscle so this muscle is known as peroneus longus actually uh, yeah one student said the uh, tibialis anterior that is attached to inferior medial aspect of the first metatarsal whereas to the inferior lateral aspect peroneus longus will be attached so the initially peroneus longus muscle was attached to, to the femur but as we assume the bipedal uh, uh, locum uh, bipedal uh, the upright posture this portion of the peroneus longus became uh degenerated and it is called as fibial fibular collateral ligament now there's another mcq question on this now we already discussed that the tibial collateral ligament was attached to, to the medial meniscus right now fibular collateral ligament this is the fibular collateral ligament it is separated from 
the lateral meniscus by tendon of popliteus so tendon of popliteus will separate the fibula collateral ligament from the lateral meniscus okay so that is one more mcq we will discuss later so if someone asks you the fibula collateral ligament is degenerated part of which muscle what will be your answer students peroneus longus excellent excellent is it attached to meniscus lateral meniscus no ma'am yeah it is not attached why it is not attached because there is the tendon of tibialis posterior in between them okay now we will see so by now we have discussed the ligamentum patella we have discussed the tibial collateral ligament from adductor magnus it was formed we have discussed the fibula collateral ligament which is formed by peroneus longus now we will discuss oblique popliteal ligament students if you were present for the last few classes you will tell me this ligament is formed by a muscle which muscle students oblique popliteal ligament i will tell you the answer so oblique popliteal lig ligament you remember the muscle semi membranosus semi yeah very good very good so semi membranosus was attached to posterior aspect of the medial condyle of the tibia right semi membranosus is at, uh, attached to posterior aspect on the medial condyle of the tibia it sends an expansion which is called as oblique popliteal ligament this oblique popliteal ligament it will give strength to the capsule of the knee joint posteriorly and where it is attached it is attached to the intercondylar line between the two condyle is the intercondylar line and the lateral condyle so this is the oblique popliteal ligament now there is a mcq question asked on this oblique popliteal ligament what are the structures which pierce the oblique popliteal ligament so it is middle genicular middle genicular means uh, knee middle genicular artery it is in the center so middle genicular means knee and artery this is a branch of popliteal artery this along with middle genicular nerve and posterior division of the obturator nerve will pierce the oblique popliteal ligament but your mcq question is asked on the middle genicular artery so middle genicular artery which is a branch of popliteal artery pierces the oblique popliteal ligament it will go enter inside the knee joint it will supply two ligaments which are called as cruciate ligament i will discuss it later so Uh, it is the middle genicular artery which is a branch of popliteal artery which will pierce the oblique popliteal ligament enter the knee joint and it will give blood supply to the cruciate ligament now we will see about the cruciate ligament again this is a very important uh, slide this is the superior aspect of the tibia so this is the anterior tibia tuberosity is here so this is the anterior aspect and this is the posterior aspect now we will first to see what are the structures attached now what you can see here is this is the lateral condyle this is the medial on the tibia first we will see what this menisci are saying this posterior horn of the medial meniscus so we will draw the medial meniscus first this is the anterior on so what i have drawn now is the medial meniscus let me draw the lateral meniscus as well so this is the lateral meniscus so meniscus is like this it's in the form of a c shaped letter now this meniscus it has two horns facing anteriorly is the anterior horn anterior on laterally is the i mean posteriorly is the posterior horn so in between the condyles of the tibia is the intercondylar eminence where all these structures are present what you are seeing here let us start from anterior to posterior aspect first structure what you encounter is what is this students anterior horn the, medial yeah, meniscus very good anterior horn of the medial meniscus after that you will have one cruciate ligament i will tell you first there are two cruciate ligament anterior cruciate ligament and posterior cruciate ligament 
they are named based on their attachment to the tibia anterior cruciate ligament is attached anteriorly on the tibia posterior cruciate ligament is attached posteriorly on the tibia so these cruciate ligaments mcq question they are named based on where they are attached in the tibia so the structures first you got the anterior one of the medial meniscus then you got the anterior cruciate ligament then what is this you tell me students anterior one of which meniscus lateral meniscus very good anterior one of lateral meniscus this is a posterior one of the lateral meniscus then you have the posterior on of the medial meniscus then you have the posterior cruciate ligament so this is the attachment of the structures on the superior aspect of the tibia in the intercondylar eminence we will repeat once again anterior to posterior you have the anterior on of the medial meniscus you have the anterior cruciate ligament anterior horn of the lateral meniscus posterior horn of the lateral meniscus posterior horn of the medial meniscus posterior cruciate ligament so cruciate ligaments are two in number as already discussed anterior cruciate posterior cruciate now the question is why are they called as cruciate they are called as cruciate because they cross each other in a letter x that is why they are called as cruciate ligament several questions have been asked on this so please pay attention students now we will discuss if you can see here these are the cruciate ligaments there are two cruciate ligaments anterior cruciate and posterior cruciate the anterior cruciate ligament as you can see it is placed anteriorly on the tibia now let us several questions have been asked on anterior cruciate ligament so we will discuss them thoroughly anterior cruciate ligament arises from anterior aspect of the tibia in the intercondylar area so once it arises it is passing upwards it is passing backwards it is not passing forwards it is passing upwards backwards and laterally see here fibula is here so this is lateral aspect this is medial aspect students you tell me which condyle is this now which condyle is this medial condyle of femur or lateral condyle yes see here fibula is here so it is a lateral aspect so this is the lateral condyle of the femur this is the medial condyle of the femur right so in the lateral condyle this is the lateral surface of lateral condyle this is the medial surface of the uh, of the lateral condyle so lateral surface of lateral condyle of femur medial surface of lateral condyle of the femur so we will trace the anterior cruciate ligament now it was attached on the anterior aspect of the tibia it passed upwards backwards and laterally and where did it attach it attached to the medial surface of lateral condyle of the femur to the posterior end shall i repeat it once again students yes or no no ma'am okay is it clear fine so that was about the cruciate ligament now anterior cruciate ligament were attached to several again one more mcq question anterior cruciate ligament is attached to which condyle it is attached to the lateral condyle which surface of lateral condyle medial surface is it anterior or posterior obviously it is attached to the posterior so anterior cruciate ligament it is attached to the anterior aspect of the tibia it passes upwards backwards laterally and it is attached to the medial surface of lateral condyle at the posterior end of the lateral condyle of the femur so that is about the anterior cruciate ligament they have asked you mcq that which condyle it is attached it is the lateral condyle now we will discuss about the posterior cruciate ligament so now we will discuss about the posterior cruciate ligament as already discussed posterior cruciate ligament is attached on the posterior aspect it is attached on the posterior aspect of the tibia that's why it is called posterior cruciate ligament 
Now this passes upwards, forwards, and medially. This is medial, right? Upwards, forwards, and medially. And where does it gain its attachment? What condyle is this? This is the medial condyle of femur. This is the medial surface of medial condyle, and this is the lateral surface of the medial condyle. So the fibers pass upwards, forwards, and medially, and it is attached to. anterior end on the lateral surface of the medial condyle of the femur very simple so posterior cruciate ligament mcq question is attached to which condyle of the femur medial condyle anterior cruciate ligament is attached to which condyle lateral condyle of the femur so that is about the cruciate ligament now what is the function of this cruciate ligament we will first discuss about the anterior cruciate ligament so we will discuss about the anterior cruciate ligament now this anterior cruciate ligament what is its function it says that it maintains the anterior posterior stability of the knee joint as well as the side to side stability now since it is attached to the anterior end of the tibia and posterior end of the femur it says that hyper extension is prevented what is the meaning of that it means that during extension of the knee joint tibia is not hyper extended tibia will not come in front of the femur so that is meant by hyper extension is prevented so what is the function of anterior cruciate ligament it sees to that tibia is not moved more anteriorly it prevents more anterior displacement of the tibia now one more mcq question since it is attached to the posterior end of the femur it also sees that uh, the posterior displacement of femur is prevented and one more thing anterior cruciate ligament is very stiff and taut during extension now we will discuss the posterior cruciate ligament now this posterior cruciate ligament it becomes very taut during flexion and what is the function of this it sees that the tibia is not displaced posteriorly and since it is attached to anterior end of the femur it also sees that the femur is not uh, pushed forwards during the movements of the knee joint we will discuss them further when we get the mcq questions now this is to show you how the anterior cruciate ligament and posterior cruciate ligaments are crossing this anterior cruciate ligament prevents the forward displacement of the tibia over the femur whereas posterior cruciate ligament prevents posterior displacement of the tibia over the femur now we will discuss the blood supply of anterior cruciate ligament this is previously discussed can someone tell me what is the blood supply of cruciate ligament students what is the blood supply of cruciate ligament we have discussed few slides earlier make yes, an attempt medial jugular artery which is a branch of popliteal artery excellent so you can see here femoral artery continues as the popliteal artery this is the popliteal artery so it gives artery which is called as middle genicular artery this middle genicular artery will pierce the oblique popliteal ligament it will enter inside and supply both the anterior and the posterior cruciate ligament so that is about the blood supply this is a mcq question now we will discuss about the menisci of the knee joint as we have already seen that the knee joint is divided into two compartment by menisci this is the upper compartment this will be the lower compartment so upper compartment is also called as the menisco femoral compartment lower compartment is called as menisco tibial compartment because this is the meniscus and tibia will be here so this is called as menisco tibial compartment femur will be here this is called as menisco femoral compartment so in the upper compartment or the menisco femoral compartment flexion and extension will occur in the lower compartment or the menisco tibial compartment rotation will occur so we can see here this is the medial meniscus and this is the lateral meniscus several mcq questions are asked on this 
this is the anterior aspect so we will see that this is the anterior horn anterior horn of the medial meniscus this will be the posterior horn of the medial meniscus if you see properly the medial meniscus anterior posterior diameter is more compared to that of the lateral meniscus both are c shape and we will also see that uh, it has inner concave margin outer convex margin so is the inner concave margin outer convex margin right now the inner concave this inner margin it is avascular and it gets its nutrition from the synovial fluid present inside whereas the peripheral margin is vascular uh, mainly from the blood vessels which ramify over the capsule so this was about the medial meniscus as we have already discussed medial meniscus was attached to which ligament students medial meniscus was attached to tbl collateral mm -hmm. ligament right now we have the lateral meniscus anterior horn of uh, sorry yes since i said this is the anterior aspect this has to become the anterior horn this has to become the posterior horn again this is the anterior horn and this is the posterior horn now lateral meniscus also has the anterior horn and the posterior horn now lateral uh, an mcq question is asked that which meniscus is more prone to be injured the answer for that will be medial meniscus because medial meniscus is attached to tibial collateral ligament and the mobility of medial meniscus is very poor it is not mobile whereas lateral meniscus is highly protected in the next few slides i will tell you what are the factors which will protect the lateral meniscus so that is about the meniscus now again we will see so these are the two meniscus here so this is the lateral meniscus because tibia is here lateral aspect and this is the medial meniscus menisco femoral compartment menisco tibial compartment okay now see here this is the fibula collateral ligament fibula collateral ligament was formed by which muscle students peroneus longus which yeah very good peroneus longus formed the fibula collateral ligament i said you fibula collateral ligament separated from the medial uh, sorry lateral meniscus by tendon of popliteus right you can see it here so this is a fibula collateral ligament this is the popliteus tendon so fibula collateral ligament is separated from the lateral meniscus by the popliteus tendon if you observe here the lateral meniscus the lateral meniscus is attached to the popliteus tendon what is a very important role of this is i will further explain in the next few slides but just pay attention now now what ha what happens is the popliteus during flexion of the knee joint the popliteus pulls the lateral meniscus backward in order to prevent the crushing of the lateral meniscus between the femur and the tibia so we discussed that what are the factors which will protect the lateral meniscus one of the factor is the popliteus tendon which is attached to the lateral meniscus during flexion this is anterior aspect of the tibia so during flexion what happens the lateral meniscus is pulled backwards and it prevents the crushing in between the femur and the tibia so that is one of the function we will see one more function what protects the lateral meniscus here you can observe tibial collateral ligament medial meniscus is attached to the tibial collateral ligament now there is one more factor which protects the uh, lateral meniscus so we already discussed the tendon of popliteus protected the lateral meniscus now there is one more ligament which protects the lateral meniscus and that ligament is called as menisco femoral ligament it is called as menisco femoral ligament the name itself the attachment itself explains the name menisco because it is attached to the lateral meniscus femoral because it is attaching to the medial condyle of the femur ligament let us see what this ligament will do so what this ligament is called as menisco 
femoral ligament so this is attached to the lateral meniscus as well as the medial condyle of the femur so this menisco femoral ligament it has anterior band and the posterior band i will show you in the next slide so this is a posterior cruciate ligament so menisco femoral ligament it has two ons so one will be the posterior uh, posterior ligament and the anterior ligament so anti so this is posterior menisco femoral ligament and is on the front of the posterior cruciate ligament both of them attach to the medial dial of the femur what is the function of femoral ligament is it will the meniscus anteriorly during tension we discussed that the popliteus tendon attaching to the lateral meniscus will push the tendon backward during flexion whereas the menisco femoral uh, ligament will push the lateral meniscus forwards during extension so in such way the lateral meniscus is protected and therefore the mcq question which meniscus is most uh, frequently injured it is medial meniscus not the lateral meniscus is this clear students did you all understand yes ma'am okay pa now that was about the yes now one more mcq question coronary ligament right now the capsule we know that the capsule covers the knee joint so near the meniscus this is the medial meniscus and this uh, so near the meniscus what happens the capsule ligament will be thickened if this is the capsule near the meniscus the capsule will be thickened and that is called as coronary ligament what does it attach is your mcq question so the coronary ligament will attach the meniscus to the tibia both the medial meniscus and the lateral meniscus will be attached to, to the tibia so that's an mcq question now synovial membrane we will discuss the synovial membrane the synovial membrane it lines the inner aspect of the capsule let us see how it lines the inner aspect of the capsule now the synovial membrane it is not attaching to the articular surface so the red color thing what you are seeing here that is the reflection of the synovial membrane if you observe properly anterior cruciate ligament posterior cruciate ligament so these anterior cruciate and posterior cruciate ligament are not surrounded by the synovial membrane i will show you one more diagram if you see here this is the anterior cruciate ligament this is the posterior cruciate ligament so the reflection of the synovial membrane is such that the cruciate ligaments are not surrounded by the synovial membrane that is why one more mcq question the cruciate ligaments are intracapsular because they are inside the capsule and they are extra synovial because they are not surrounded by the synovial membrane that is the mcq question now there is one more very very important mechanism <clears throat> which is called as locking and unlocking of the knee joint uh, very very important i'll uh, explain very slowly students now first we will discuss about the locking before that i will tell you one point this is the lateral condyle of the femur and this is the medial condyle of the femur if you observe properly the anterior posterior diameter of the lateral condyle is less compared to the anterior posterior diameter of the medial condyle just keep this in mind the anterior posterior diameter of lateral condyle is less than the anterior posterior diameter of the medial condyle now we will see what is the meaning of locking of the knee joint now just imagine you are standing and you are trying to walk so you you can just imagine one of your leg is on the ground you have lifted one leg to take the next step now this leg is already in extension whereas this knee is in flexion when you try to put this lower limb on the ground and try to extend what happens is when you try to extend this lower limb 
so in the last degree of extension that is when your limb is somewhere here when you say the extension is complete when the anterior aspect of the thigh and anterior aspect of the leg are in the same plane then you say that that is the time you say that extension is complete so what happens is during extension in the final 30 degree of extension which means that just a 30 degree before extension what happens is i've already discussed anterior posterior diameter of the lateral condyle of femur is less than that of the medial condyle so what happens is this is the lateral condyle this is the medial condyle so in last 30 degree of extension of the knee joint because the anterior posterior diameter of the medial condyle is more there is medial rotation of femur over the fixed tibia that is known as locking mechanism of the knee joint now what happens in locking is all the ligaments are taut and the joint is very protected so this is known as locking mechanism locking mechanism is brought about by the quadriceps muscles mainly vastus medialis students should i explain the locking mechanism once again yes ma'am yes i will explain it once again see here in simple words what do you mean by locking and why should locking of the knee joint occur now what nature has done is the center of gravity of the knee joint is slightly in front therefore there are more chances of hyper extension that is the femur can come in more uh, over the tibia so what nature has done is it will lock the knee joint in such a way that hyper extension of the knee joint is prevented and the joint is safe and secure so what happens this is flexion of the knee joint right when you make extension of the knee joint when you do the extension of the knee joint so when you extend it what happens in the last few degrees of extension just before complete extension the femur rotates medially over the tibia so what happens the femur rotates medially over the tibia and the joint is said to be locked that means the joint is locked and no movement will occur if movement has to occur the joint should be unlocked only then movement will occur so in simple words if someone ask you what is locking of the knee joint you will say the medial rotation of the femur over the tibia in final degree of extension is it clear students is it clear everyone so that is the locking which muscle brings about locking which muscle brings about locking students vastus medialis vastus medialis so locking means medial rotation of the femur over the tibia okay now you are already standing on one leg you should uh, take one more step so what you will do you will have to flex your knee joint so that time the knee joint from the locked position should be unlocked very simple for locking the femur rotated medially over the tibia for unlocking the femur will rotate laterally over the tibia for unlocking popliteus muscle is the muscle of unlocking very very important several mcq questions have been asked on this muscle of unlocking is popliteus muscle of locking is vastus medialis clear students is this aspect clear should i explain once again no ma okay pa okay once again during the mcq question if you have some doubt uh, problem i will explain so that is the locking and unlocking of the knee joint now if you see there are two components again here when the uh, foot is on the ground when the foot is off the ground very very simple we will discuss it so locking and unlocking mechanism when the foot is on the ground what do you mean by this when you are standing when your foot is on the ground we will see what is locking when your foot is off the ground we will see what is 
uh, locking and unlocking. First, we will discuss when you are standing on the ground. That is, when your foot is on the ground. Very simple. Locking means when your foot is on the ground. Locking means medial rotation of femur over which bone, students? Tell me. Tibia. Medial rotation Tibia. of femur Tibia. over that. Excellent, excellent. So that is locking when your foot is on the ground. Just imagine you are standing. Which is the muscle for locking? MCQ question. Vastus medialis. Very good, very good. Vastus medialis. Now unlocking when the foot is on the ground. Same thing. Just explain. So your uh, your limb is locked for unlocking. Lateral rotation of femur over the tibia is known as unlocking. Which is the muscle of unlocking? Very very important. Muscle of Poplite. unlocking, students. Popliteus. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Popliteus. Okay. So this is when your foot is on the ground. Never forget when the foot is on the ground. Locking of the knee joint means medial rotation of femur over the tibia. Muscle is vastus medialis. If in option, if they have not given vastus medialis, if they have given quadriceps femoris, you should mark this answer. More near answer is vastus medialis. Unlocking of the knee joint is lateral rotation of the femur over the tibia. The muscle is popliteus. Okay, now we will see one more aspect. This is already explained. Yes, yes. Now we will see one more aspect. Now imagine you are sitting on a chair. You are sitting on a chair. and you feel like when you're sitting on the chair just imagine your knee is flexed in 90 degree okay and your foot is touching the ground just like this image now you want to raise the foot you want to raise the foot let us see about the locking and unlocking when the foot is off the ground see here the foot is off the ground in such case again this is a mcq question what happens is during final degree of extension of the knee joint now because the foot is off the ground opposite occurs that is tibia will move laterally over the fixed femur tibia will move laterally over the fixed femur this is known as locking what is unlocking when you try to bring it back to the ground that time tibia will move medially over the fixed femur so that is put on the ground locking and unlocking very simple so when the foot is off the ground so the knee uh, there is lateral rotation of tibia over the fixed femur unlocking is medial rotation of the tibia over the fixed femur students did you all understand this concept foot on the ground foot off the ground locking and unlocking mechanism should i explain again students did you all understand okay so now we will go to the next slide now very important again mcq question are uh, the bursas in relation to the knee joint there are several bursa almost 12 bursas are there but we will be discussing the important bursa so here what you are seeing is quadriceps femoris this is the femur now this is the skin this is the skin so in between the skin and the patella you have the subcutaneous prepatellar bursa mcq question subcutaneous prepatellar bursa just below the patella you have subcutaneous infrapatellar bursa very important subcutaneous infrapatellar bursa now the question mcq question based on this is prepatellar bursitis is known as housemaid's knee because housemaid they to mop the floor they kneel on the knee and they mop the floor so the inflammation of the prepatellar bursa is more likely you call that bursitis as housemaid's knee so housemaid's knee is inflammation of the prepatellar bursa inflammation of the subcutaneous infrapatellar bursa is known as clergyman's knee clergyman's uh, they uh, they kneel down and they pray to god okay so that time what happens is it is the infrapatellar bursitis can happen so infrapatellar bursitis is known as clergyman's knee i will show in the diagram 
the housemates housemates knees known as inflammation of the prepatellar bursa prepatellar bursa it is this housemates knee clergyman's knee is inflammation of the subcutaneous infrapatellar bursa this is an mcq question students are you are you all following yes or no yes ma'am yes ma'am okay pa now we will discuss uh, the mcq question clergyman knee is inflammation of ancillary bursa prepatellar bursa prepatellar very good very good very good infrapatellar bursa okay now anterior cruciate ligament originates from posterior part of the this is the tibia anterior posterior so does it arise from posterior aspect of the intercondylar area does it arise from the anterior okay. part of the intercondylar area does it arise from medial part of the medial femoral condyle or lateral part of the lateral femoral condyle what's your answer students anterior anterior part of, of intercondylar area of tibia excellent, excellent. yeah very good now a healthy healthy uh, young adult sitting at a table now just imagine one person is sitting on a table with knee at 90 degree flexion what will happen when he fully extends the knee you remember and uh, the locking when the foot is off the ground so we will discuss movement of the tibial tuberosity towards the medial border of the patella movement of the tibial tuberosity towards the lateral border of the patella movement of tibial tuberosity towards the center of patella no change in relationship you make a guess students we will discuss b b Excellent. of movement of tibial tuberosity towards good, lateral border good. very good so that means the tibia is moving laterally over the fixed femur okay so your answer is movement of tibial tuberosity towards the lateral border of the patella okay now if the tibial tuberosity moves towards the medial border of the patella what do you call that condition as what, what term is that locking or unlocking unlocking of the excellent excellent that is unlocking. called as unlocking very good now anterior cruciate ligament prevents anterior dislocation of the tibia posterior dislocation of the tibia anterior dislocation of the femur posterior dislocation of the femur anterior, anterior dislocation, dislocation of the femur posterior dislocation yeah yeah correct so we discussed anterior cruciate ligament is attached to the anterior aspect of the tibia it is attached to the medial aspect of lateral condyle to the posterior end right so this ligament sees that tibia is not displaced anteriorly as well as femur is not displaced posteriorly so your answer will be anterior cruciate ligaments prevents anterior dislocation of tibia because it is attached to the anterior aspect of the tibia and it prevents a posterior dislocation of the femur because it is attached to the posterior end of the medial surface of the lateral condyle of the femur so this is the answer for that the blood supply of anterior cruciate ligament is derived from superior middle medial genicular artery descending middle genicular middle artery middle excellent. genicular artery excellent middle genicular artery a boy is playing football it receives a blow on the lateral aspect of the knee and suffered a twisting fall his medial meniscus is damaged which other structures is most likely to be injured deltoid ligament posterior posterior cruciate ligament anterior cruciate ligament patellar ligament any idea students anterior cruciate excellent excellent now what happens is see a boy is playing football receives a blow on the lateral aspect of the knee now if this is a lateral aspect the boy received a blow on the lateral aspect of the knee and he suffered a twisting fall so what happens is along with the medial meniscus now one uh, simple trick here is medial meniscus is closely related to tibial collateral ligament as well as anterior cruciate ligament okay so in this case anterior cruciate ligament is affected because of hyper abduction okay so medial meniscus is closely related to tibial collateral ligament as well as anterior cruciate ligament so the answer here will be anterior cruciate ligament 
true statement about the posterior cruciate ligament is it is attached to the lateral femoral condyle it is it is intrasynovial it prevents posterior dislocation of tibia it is relaxed in full flexion prevents posterior dislocation of tibia excellent now see Option here and see prevent we will see it once again you imagine this is the tibia anterior cruciate ligament is here posterior cruciate ligament is in the posterior aspect of the tibia now where does it attach it attaches to the anterior end where does it attach to the anterior end on the lateral surface lateral of the surface medial, of the medial, condyle. medial condyle of the excellent excellent so it is not attached to lateral femoral condyle it is attached to medial, medial femoral, femoral condyle, condyle. is it intrasynovial students no no ma'am intracapsular extrasynovial it is not yeah very good very good it is intracapsular because it's inside the capsule it is extrasynovial extra because the synovial joint will yeah it will not cover the anterior and posterior cruciate ligament that is why it is not intrasynovial it is extrasynovial correct your answer is correct prevents posterior dislocation of tibia and we discussed that posterior cruciate ligament it is taut in flexion it is not relaxed right so your answer is prevents posterior dislocation of tibia true about medial meniscus made up of hyaline cartilage injury to lateral meniscus is more frequent than medial meniscus it is c shape it is fixed to medial or tibial collateral ligament inner part is more vascular what do you think is the answer students it is c shaped and fixed to medial collateral ligament <laughs> excellent excellent we will solve it now it is not made up of hyaline cartilage it is made up of fibro cartilage okay and uh, injury to lateral meniscus is not frequent because it is protected by so many thing can you tell me one thing tendon of popliteus and menisco femoral ligament that will protect the lateral meniscus unfortunately medial meniscus is more frequently injured we already discussed it is c shape it is fixed to tibial collateral ligament correct we discussed the meniscus as inner a vascular outer peripheral vascular so this is also wrong so your answer is it is c shaped and it's fixed to the medial collateral or tibial collateral ligament posterior dislocation of tibia on femur is prevented by posterior cruciate ligament anterior cruciate ligament medial meniscus lateral uh, meniscus medial collateral ligament posterior, posterior dislocation cruciate ligament very good posterior dislocation of tibia on femur is prevented by posterior cruciate ligament now coronary ligament of knee is situated in between menisci and synovium two posterior arms of the menisci meniscus and tibial condyle meniscus and femoral condyle coronary ligament of knee is situated between make some guesses students yeah yes answer is answer is yeah answer is c because see we have the meniscus medial meniscus lateral meniscus and the capsule is surrounding the knee joint the that portion that portion of the capsule near the menisci will be thickened and it will attach the meniscus to the tibia so your answer will be meniscus to the tibial condyle now physiological locking involves internal rotation of femur over the stabilis internal rotation means medial rotation internal rotation of femur over the stabilized tibia internal rotation of tibia over the stabilized femur external rotation of tibia over the stabilized femur external rotation of femur over the stabilized tibia internal rotation of femur over stabilized tibia oh, excellent when is this when the foot is on the ground or off the ground on the ground on the ground very good very good yeah. on the ground now there is one more option when the foot is off the ground identify that option as well external rotation of the tibia over stabilized femur excellent excellent when the foot is off the ground the foot is off the ground external rotation or lateral rotation okay over the tibia over the stabilized femur so that is your answer true about posterior cruciate ligament this is already discussed prevents posterior displacement of the tibia attaches to lateral femoral condyle 
uh, intracynovial inserted on medial side of medial femoral condyle what is the answer it prevents uh, posterior displacement of tibia and uh, insert in the medial see the answer is yeah now see only this is the answer because the posterior cruciate ligament is attached to which condyle student is attached to the me uh, the femoral condyle medial femoral condyle not the medial surface it is attached to the lateral surface right lateral surface of the medial femoral condyle which end anterior end so that is the posterior cruciate ligament now oblique popliteal ligament is pierced by anterior branch of popliteal artery medial inferior genicular branch of popliteal artery medial superior genicular branch of popliteal artery middle genicular branch of the popliteal artery medial genicular middle genicular branch of popliteal artery yeah. okay now oblique popliteal ligament attaches to semimembranosus semitendinosus excellent semimembranosus you remember this is the semimembranosus attachment from the semimembranosus there is oblique popliteal ligament okay there is one more triad which is called as o'donnell triad comprises of i will explain this students now what happens is usually in uh, in footballers when they are foot is planted on the ground and they suffer a lateral injury to the knee that time what happens because of hyper abduction as already discussed there will be anterior cruciate ligament tear medial meniscus and medial collateral ligament this is called as hanapi triad so in this what happens three structures are torn anterior cruciate medial meniscus medial collateral ligament now we will discuss the skeleton of the foot okay now before that am i audible students yes ma'am yeah, ma okay pa now we will discuss the skeleton of the foot as you all know we have discussed this bone is the talus underneath what you have is the calcaneum these two tarsal bones are in the proximal layer proximal line okay in the middle line you have the navicular can you see this board shaped tarsal bone that is the navicular bone so that is in the middle row in the distal row you have the cuboid which is laterally and three cuneiform medial cuneiform intermediate cuneiform lateral cuneiform so all these are the tarsal bones now these are the metatarsal bone first second third fourth and fifth these are the phalanges okay so these are the bones of the foot now uh, we will come across the joints of the foot May, uh, first we will discuss the ankle joint later we will go to the foot uh, joints now before that yes we will discuss about the talus so this bone there is the talus so the talus if you see it from uh, if you see the talus from up this is the view what you see okay so what you are seeing here first let me explain the parts of the talus this is the head of the talus head of the talus this is the neck of the talus this is the body of the talus okay now again this is the head of the talus neck of the talus this is the body of the talus now this trochlea trochlea shaped aspect this will articulate with the tibia and it will form the ankle joint okay now if you see the talus from medial aspect if you hold the talus and see from the medial aspect this is what you will see you will see that uh, medially the talus has a comma shaped articular surface this articulates with medial malleolus to form the ankle joint okay now the head articulates with the boat shaped navicular bone and it will form talo navicular or the talo calcaneo navicular we will discuss that later if you turn the talus and see the inferior aspect this is what you will see so this is the head underneath these two will articulate with the calcaneum part which is called as sustentaculum talli i will show it later okay so this portion articulates with the calcaneum to form subtalar we will discuss once again as we see them 
if you see the lateral aspect of the talus this is what you see it has a triangular lateral articular facet which will articulate with the lateral malleolus of the fibula okay so these are some of the aspects of the talus we will discuss them once again okay now in the talus we have something called as a medial tubercle there is a groove for flexor hallucis longus not asked so far and this is the lateral tubercle of the talus we will discuss them in detail before that we will discuss the calcaneum as well so this calcaneum if you see from above this is what you will see anteriorly it will articulate with the cuboid okay now it has anterior talus facet you have these facets they will articulate with the uh, with the talus to form talo calcaneo navicular joint again we will discuss it later so this articular surface will articulate with the talus to form subtalar we will discuss it later okay now this is a plantar as if you see the calcaneum from below this is what you will see so you have three tubercle anterior tubercle and two posterior tubercle i will discuss it and two posterior tubercle so here the long plantar ligament is attached not asked so far this is the posterior aspect of calcaneum in the middle third tendo achilles or the achilles tendon will uh, join the calcaneum seen from the lateral aspect this is what you see there is one tubercle here and this is called as the peroneal tubercle uh, just listen it is not asked in front passes peroneus brevis lateral compartment muscle below passes peroneus longus again the lateral compartment muscle we will discuss them detail once again now uh, yes now one point here which we have to discuss is yes see in the inferior aspect of the talus there is a sinus which is called as tarsal sinus tarsal sinus and in calcaneum you have one more sinus which is called as calcaneal sinus sulcus when both are joined together sulcus of the talus sulcus of the calcaneum will form a opening which is called as sinus tarsi this is important sinus tarsi i will explain once again so this is the talus this is the calcaneum the sinus of or the sulcus of the talus joined with the sulcus of the calcaneum it will form a small opening that is called as sinus tarsi one ligament will be attached to this point we will discuss it later now very important we will discuss the ankle joint now ankle joint it is formed by the medial malleolus of the tibia it is formed by inferior aspect of the tibia it is formed by lateral malleolus of the fibula and it is formed by the body of the talus along with the lateral articular facet and the medial articular facet now we will see that the line of the gravity in the ankle joint passes slightly in front of the ankle joint what does it mean it means that there are more chances of the bones of the leg sliding over to the front how is that prevented that is prevented by a mortise you call it as tibio fibular mortise so what happens is the medial malleolus of the tibia along with the inferior aspect of the tibia and the lateral malleolus of the fibula along with the inferior tibio fibular ligament they form a mortise to lock the talus so imagine this is the medial malleolus of the tibia it is attaching to the medial articular comma shaped facet of the talus then you have the inferior aspect of the tibia lateral malleolus of the fibula attaching to the triangular articular surface on the lateral aspect of the talus so it is forming a tibial uh, mortise and it will hold the talus very tightly that is how it prevents the anterior dislocation of the leg bones that is the tibia and the fibula now for the more there are some ligaments which strengthen this ankle joint let us see what those ligaments are medially so if you see here medially what are the ligament present you will have deltoid ligament very very important students you have deltoid ligament 
which protects the ankle joint medially this deltoid ligament has two component superficial component and the deep component first we will discuss the superficial component so this is the medial malleolus of the tibia right so superficially this is attached to uh, see tibio tibio navicular part so from the tibia to the navicular bone extending is the tibio navicular part tibio navicular ligament from the medial malleolus of the tibia to the calcaneum is tibio calcaneal part from the tibia to the tubercle of the talus is posterior tibio talar part students are you all understanding are you all understanding students yes yes i will go once again uh, we will do it slowly so deltoid ligament has superficial component and the deep component now superficial component it has several component based on the uh, uh, attachment we will name them so this is the medial malleolus of the tibia let us draw the component students this is the navicular bone and this is the talus right talus now the ligament from the tibia to the navicular bone is called as tibio navicular ligament this is the calcaneum this is the sustentacular process of the calcaneum from the tibia to the calcaneum is called as tibio calcaneal ligament this is the medial tubercle of the talus from the tibia to the medial tubercle of the talus is called as tibio talar ligament which posterior tibio talar ligament so these three components will form the superficial component of the deltoid the deep component of the deltoid is from the tibia to the neck of the talus that is called as anterior tibio talar ligament i will draw students you you name the part so deltoid ligament it has superficial and the deep first we will discuss the superficial component from the tibial medial malleolus to the navicular which component is the students tibio navicular Excellent, excellent, excellent. So, from the tibia to the sustentaculum, calla is called as tibio calcaneal. Tibio calcaneal. From the tibia to the talus, posteriorly, it is called as posterior tibio talus. So, all this will very good, very good. All this will form the superficial component. The deep component is formed by the tibia and the medial surface of the neck of the talus since it is anterior it is called as anterior you continue what is the name of this ligament tibio talar anterior, anterior. Tibio. very good tibio very tibio. good so these components will form the deltoid ligament okay now laterally we will see the muscles very very simple so from the lateral malleolus attaching to the lateral aspect of the neck of the talus is called as anterior talofibular from the fibula to the calcaneum is called as you call, you, you tell it calcaneo fibular okay from the uh, talus to the malleolus is called as talofibular ligament these are the lateral ligament what are the lateral ligament students we will see it here from the tibia to the neck of the from the fibula to the neck of the talus is called as what students talofibular Talo so what is this called as talofibular from the calcaneum to the fibula is called as calcaneo fibular from the talus to the malleolus is called as talofibular posterior talofibular this is anterior talofibular so that finishes the ankle joint and its support anteriorly and uh, medially now we will discuss this is not asked but just pay attention students so the ankle joint in front is supported by all the muscles of the anterior compartment of the leg we have discussed in last class what were the muscles tibialis anterior extensor hallucis longus, longus anterior tibial artery was the deep peroneal nerve which is the nerve of the anterior compartment then we have the extensor distorum longus peroneus tertius laterally we have the peroneus brevis peroneus longus and posteriorly 
obviously posterior compartment of the leg muscles namely tibialis posterior flexor digitorum longus then you have flexor hallucis longus and the two artery the mnemonic for this is tom dick and harry okay so now what are the functions of the ankle joint mainly dorsiflexion when you uh, lift the foot towards your leg that is called as dorsiflexion and then movement towards the ground is called as plantar flexion okay so this completes the ankle joint now we will see other joints of the foot so what are the other joints of the foot now we have already discussed the ankle joint now in between the tarsal is called as intertarsal joints in between the tarsal and the metatarsal is called as tarso metatarsal joint metatarso phalangeal joint this is between the metatarsal is called as intermetatarsals okay interphalangeal there are some of the joints so now we will discuss a very very important subtalar joint now this is the talus and this is the calcaneum subtalar joint is formed in between the talus and the calcaneum if you see here the inferior aspect of the talus will articulate with the inferior concave aspect of the talus will articulate with the convex articular surface of the calcaneum and form a joint which is called as subtalar joint okay so this is a subtalar joint actually the joints between the talus and the calcaneum are three in number one is anterior and medial and one is posterior anterior medially you call the joint as talo calcaneo navicular joint posteriorly you have the subtalar joint now let us see what separates these two joints before that how is the subtalar joint formed it is formed by the concave articular facet on the inferior aspect of the talus and the convex articular facet in the calcaneum so that is the subtalar joint students any idea what is sinus tarsi what is sinus tarsi formed by talus and calcaneal sinus excellent excellent so this is the sinus tarsi there is one ligament here that ligament will separate the subtalar joint from the talo calcaneo navicular joint so we will discuss in future uh, i mean what are the ligaments forming the subtalar joint if you can see here uh this is the sinus tarsi and the ligament here is talo calcanean ligament introsius talo calcanean means it is attaching to the talus and the calcaneum that is why it is called as talo calcanean ligament so this ligament separates the subtalar joint with the uh, talo calcaneo navicular joint now let us see what are the ligaments supporting the subtalar joint already discussed this was the introsius talo calcanean ligament which separated the subtalar from talo calcaneo navicular joint there is one more ligament called as cervical ligament so this is an mcq question so cervical ligament is attached to the upper surface of the calcaneum it is attached to the upper surface of the calcaneum and it is attached to the inferior lateral aspect of the talus so cervical ligament is attached to the talus it is an mcq question so what is the attachment it is attached to the superior aspect of the calcaneum and it is attached to the talus inferior lateral aspect of the talus this also gives to the uh, subtalar joint now what is the function what is the movement occurring at the subtalar joint is inversion and eversion so what is inversion when you both the soles each other that is called as inversion you can do it now if you raise your medial margin of the foot of both the legs your sole will face each other and that is called as inversion it is always associated with plantar flexion what is eversion raise the lateral border of your uh, foot so that the sole will face outwards 
that is called as eversion it is always associated with dorsiflexion so when you do eversion you will observe that there is dorsiflexion now we will come to one more joint that is we have almost come to the end of the uh, class talocalcaneo navicular joint so this articulation is between the talus between the navicular and the calcaneum so this is called as talo talus remote navicular and calcaneum so this joint is called as talo calcaneo navicular joint it is also called as mid tarsal joint now we will discuss a mcq question plantar calcaneo navicular ligament very simple this ligament is called as spring ligament and it's called as calcaneo navicular ligament because it is attached from the calcaneum to the navicular bone that is why it is called as calcaneo navicular ligament so what is the spring ligament also called as students mcq question spring ligament is also called as very good very good so this is a calcaneum sustentacular talae of the sustentaculum talae of the calcaneum so the spring ligament is attached to the sustentaculum talae of the calcaneum to the navicular bone so it is called as plantar calcaneo navicular ligament this ligament supports the talo uh, calcaneo navicular ligament see this ligament here now this is called as spring ligament i will tell you why it is called as spring ligament so this is a spring ligament below it is supported by tendon of tibialis posterior and which component of talus is this students this is the head of the talus if you see here the head of the talus is resting over the spring ligament and actually what happens is this part is covered by a fibrocartilage where the head of the talus rests over the spring ligament now what happens when you stand on the ground this medial longitudinal arch the concavity reduces when you lift your leg above from the ground the media the concavity of the medial longitudinal arch is restored so that is why it is called as spring ligament because of this action okay now your mcq question here is the talus head of the talus is supported by which ligament what is the ligament students spring ligament very good very good now there is one more component which is called as supination by now you know what is supination of the and uh, of the uh, upper limb right similarly we have already studied inversion and eversion what is inversion students what is inversion elevation of medial ligament yeah very good Me elevation of the medial so that the sole will face each other right now uh, inversion is best appreciated when the foot is off the ground when it is not on the ground but when the foot is on the ground and you lift the medial border of the foot that is called as supination it is not called as inversion okay now so supination is associated with inversion and plantar flexion whereas pronation when you raise your when the foot is on the ground you raise the lateral margin of the foot so pronation occurs along with eversion and dorsiflexion okay now we will answer the mcq question the stability of the ankle joint is maintained by all except ankle joint spring ligament deltoid ligament lateral ligament shape of the talar articular surface what is the answer students make some guesses i will explain i will explain see here ankle joint we already said that the tibia and fibula it formed a mortise in which the talus was locked right so shape of yeah so uh shape of the talar uh, bones contributed in the stability you remember the deltoid ligament on the medial aspect which supported the ankle joint it was made up of tibio navicular mm -hmm. tibio talar tibio calcanean 
the lateral mm-hmm. ligament is also giving strength to the anchor joint what are the component you have the tibio uh, talo fibular anterior talo fibular posterior talo fibular calcaneo fibular so all these are the ligaments of the ankle joint which supported the ankles from the lateral side deltoid ligament supported the ankle from the medial side so all these are the correct options now the subtalar joint is supported by the spring ligament which was attached from the calcaneum to the navicular bone so your option is the stability of ankle joint is maintained by all of this except the spring ligament deltoid ligament is not attached to medial malleolus sustentaculum talli spring ligament i forgot to mention a point here students we discussed deltoid ligament at two component superficial and the deep right the superficial component will blend with the spring ligament now it will be easy for you to answer the question deltoid ligament is not attached to two. make some uh, guesses students i will explain deltoid ligament is obviously attached to the medial malleolus of the tibia it is also attached to the sustentaculum talli of the calcaneum it is also attached to the spring ligament so it is not attached to the medial cuneiform okay stability of ankle joint is maintained by all except collateral ligament that is medial and lateral collateral ligament cruciate ligament tendons and muscles crossing the joint close opposition of the articular surface of the bones stability of ankle joint what is the answer students okay i will explain cruciate ligament excellent excellent cruciate ligament where did you encounter in the knee joint anterior knee cruciate joint. posterior cruciate right yeah very good so that's the answer deltoid ligament has the following component except medial malleolus this is okay so anterior tibiotalar tibio navicular tibianian calcaneo navicular what is the answer students plantar calcaneo navicular is also called as what spring ligament right so answer will be deltoid ligament as the following component except you remember the medial malleolus from the medial malleolus to the tibia it is tibiotalar anterior from the posterior tibiotalar tibio navicular tibio calcaneum right so that is the answer which of the following ligament is not attached to talus not attached to talus talo navicular deltoid ligament spring ligament cervical ligament very simple what is the answer students spring ligament what is excellent excellent also called as calcaneo navicular plantar calcaneum so talus is not attached very good so that's a spring ligament spring ligament consists of all except plantar calcaneo cuboid plantar calcaneo navicular medial calcaneo navicular lateral calcaneo navicular c spring ligament does not consist of this anything to do with calcaneo navicular is the spring ligament it has two components medial and lateral okay so the option here will be plantar calcaneo cuboid is not a part of spring whenever you see spring ligament your mind it should come that it is plantar calcaneo navicular ligament having both medial and lateral components ligament supporting the talus we have already discussed head of the talus was supported by which ligament spring ligament deltoid talus navicular cervical ligament head of the talus was resting on a ligament which is supported by fibrocartilage which ligament is that students answer is the spring ligament are you all understanding students yes or no okay eversion occurs at the following joint eversion and inversion occurs at which joint subtalar tibiotalar inferior tibio fibular ankle they occur at the subtalar uh, joint inversion and inversion yeah occurs at the subtalar joint in foot 
pronation pronation means pronation eversion dorsiflexion supination inversion plantar flexion okay so during pronation and supination what happens is the talo navicular and calcaneo cuboid joint which are the mid tarsal joints their axis becomes parallel to each other so that is the answer for this question during pronation so the joint whose axis becomes parallel is talo calcaneo navicular as well as talo navicular and calcaneo cuboid now the last few slides of the hip joint the hip joint you know it is a ball and socket type of synovial joint it is formed by head of the femur it is formed by acetabulum if you see here acetabulum it has a horse shoe shaped lunate fossa which articulates with the head of the femur then this is the acetabular fossa this is the acetabular notch which is built by transverse acetabular ligament now we will see the attachment of the capsule the capsule will be attached to the acetabulum the capsule will be attached to the acetabulum and to the femur it will be attached to the intertrochanteric line in the front intertrochanteric crest of the femur behind okay now capsular ligament has two types of ligament you have outer longitudinal and inner circular now this is a mcq question outer longitudinal ligament of the capsular will be reflected to the neck of the femur as retinaculum as retinaculum it is in this retinaculum blood vessels will travel and it will give blood supply to the head and neck of the femur okay now we will discuss some of the very important ligament extremely important ligament strongest ligament of the body is the iliofemoral ligament when you stand up you don't fall your trunk will not fall back that is because of the iliofemoral ligament mcq question is iliofemoral ligament is attached to anterior inferior iliac spine above and it is attached to the intertrochanteric line of the femur okay so this is strongest ligament in the body they will ask you what is the upper attachment of the iliofemoral ligament your answer will be anterior inferior iliac spine to the intertrochanteric line on the femur there is one more ligament which is called as pubofemoral ligament which is attached to the iliopubic eminence it is not asked and it is again attached to the femur it blends with the iliofemoral ligament you have one more weak ligament that's called as ischiofemoral ligament which is attached from the ischium to the greater trochanter of the femur so the strongest ligament of the hip joint which is the strongest ligament students iliofemoral excellent so it prevents your body or the trunk from falling backward now what are the movements brought about by this <clears throat> hip joint you have the medial rotation lateral rotation flexion of the hip joint extension of the hip joint abduction and adduction now again this was the iliofemoral ligament this is the anterior inferior iliac spine anterior superior iliac spine so it is arising from where mcq question anterior inferior iliac spine excellent, excellent. regarding hip joint which of the following statement is true retinaculum attaches femur to the hip bone inferior gluteal nerve supplies the hip abductors capsule is attached to intertrochanteric line iliosos causes hip abduction what is your answer students make some guesses <coughs> this is the last slide i will help you with this retina cum attach i will explain this students see regarding hip joint which of the following statement is true retina cum what is retina cum we discussed that the capsule as longitudinal outer longitudinal inner circular fibers right the outer longitudinal fibers were reflected to the neck of the femur as retina cum as retina cum through which the blood vessels traveled it is not attaching the femur and the hip bone it is just reflected inferior gluteal nerve 
supplies the hip abductors wrong you remember trendelenburg's test what are the hip abductors you have the gluteus medius gluteus minimus and then you mm. have the tensor fascia lata these all are hip abductors supplied by which nerve superior students gluteus. superior gluteal nerve inferior gluteal nerve supplies the gluteus maximus so this is wrong capsule is attached to intertrochanteric line of the femur in the front behind to the intertrochanteric crest so your answer is c iliosaurus it is a powerful flexor of the hip joint it is not the abductor so that is the answer any doubts students so that was the about today's class do you all have any doubts did you all understand today's class students yes ma'am okay pa so in case you all have some doubts kindly mail me i will answer your doubts so can we end the class now yes ma'am thank you ma'am okay students thank you so much all the best thank you so much